Many identify Sanskrit as being a connect to our ancient history and religious scriptures. But contrary to the popular opinion, Sanskrit is not a language restricted to religion. Sanskrit or Sanskritam is a language first, which by the very meaning translates to sculpted to perfection. Let me show you a wonder of Sanskrit. You all understand the sentence, the boy studies simple Sanskrit in school. What about if I said, studies school Sanskrit in simple boy the? Made no sense, right? In Sanskrit, this line, Balakaha Vidyalaye Saralam Sanskritam Pathati makes as much sense if I jumble the words. Pathati Balakaha Sanskritam Saralam Vidyalaye Isn't it amazing? Sanskrit is a language more evolved and richer than any other. Yes, it's centuries old. To be precise, sage Panini laid out the grammar rules in 500 BCE. Yet, it manages to be of use and relevance to us now and the coming future. For some of us, Sanskrit was an optional language in school which was mugged and not understood. But really, Sanskrit has always been so much more than religious texts. There are actually lot more non-religious texts written in every subject you can possibly imagine. Astronomy, Physiology, Metallurgy, Botany and so much more. It is just mind-boggling to realize the scientific understanding scholars had centuries back without internet and computers. Can you think of another word for water in English? Or have you ever questioned why is water called water? Sanskrit on the other hand would give you answers to both questions. The language has a range of words to express a single object by describing the properties of an object. There are over 200 words to signify just water. What's better is understanding a new word is quite simple. Words are made of root words which have meanings of their own. In this way, you could understand the surface meaning of the words in seconds. But to deduce the layers of meanings a few words hold may take ages. For example, the word Jalam describes that from its liquid state, water can become solid. The root word of the word Jalam is Jal, which means to harden. Similarly, combination of root words and sounds can make up infinite words with stable meanings. This just means infinite space for free, clear expression. Amongst the many reasons why Sanskrit is relevant, health is one of them. And not because you can read Ayurvedic scriptures, but because speaking Sanskrit would keep you healthy. Simply reciting out the Sanskrit alphabets can be beneficial for your health. There is a whole science behind it. Reciting the Sanskrit alphabet results in you rhythmically using minimal and maximal breath, contraction and expansion in your breathing efforts. This system is a pranayama practice in itself. This is helpful in balancing and calming the mind. Talk about multitasking. This benefit of pranayama further helps in increased concentration as well. Anuswara sounds. The sound is drawn down into the throat and then nasalized with the lip sound of hmm is equivalent of practicing the Brahmari Pranayam. The Visarga sound ah, pushes energy out or opens it like the Bahya Kumbhaka Pranayam. Urasya sound The last sound of the Sanskrit alphabet ha, when combined with the seven sounds na, na, ma, ya, Ra, la, and wa. It becomes urasya. For example, prahlad. It has a direct impact on the lungs. It is a purely aspirate sound produced from the throat, similar to practicing kapalabhati kriya. So, shed all the stereotypes you have about Sanskrit. It's our shared cultural heritage, and it isn't meant to be locked up in some box labeled ancient history. It's relevant, it's important and it's beneficial.